Hello my second grade friends, how are you guys doing? I hope you were able to go outside and enjoy the beautiful weather this weekend. Um, we are going to continue our story, uh, School Days According to Humphrey. Um, last week when we left off, Harry had gone, I'm sorry, uh, Humphrey had gone home with Harry. So Harry did not go home with Humphrey. Well, he did, but he took him home and uh, Humphrey noticed how late everyone was. Remember it was almost 9.30 when they were eating dinner, that's like bedtime. And then they were up until 11 o'clock. Um, and they didn't realize how late it was. So, uh, everyone had gone to bed and it was 11 o'clock, very late. We'll pick up there. The next morning, I sat in my cage in the living room and watched the Edos in action. There was a usual morning commotion of people getting up, eating breakfast, listening to the news. Here he came into the living room to see me. Hi, Humphrey. Did you have a good sleep? Did you like my house? Or do you like my house? He asked. I was about to say yes when Mrs. Ito rushed into the living room looking frantic. Harry, you have to get dressed. The game is at 9, she said. It was only 15 minutes before 9. And Mrs. Ito was still in her robe. Oh, they have a lot to get ready. What time's the game? Mr. Ito asked, wandering into the living room, still in his robe too. 9, Mrs. Ito told him as she headed for the stairs. Mr. Ito was right behind her. Harry came back down in his soccer uniform. At five minutes before nine, I crossed my toes and ho hoped that soccer field was close to the house. Finally, Mr. and Mrs. Ito came back into the living room, both dressed. Where, uh, where is Susie? Mr. Ito asked. Mrs. Ito ran back up the stairs. I'll get her dressed. I'll meet you in the car. Mr. Ito looked at the clock and shook his head. It was one minute before nine. The game is at 9 o'clock. They have one minute to get to the soccer field. Okay, he said, but we're going to be late. The last Edo finally left the house at 3 minutes after 9. They were definitely late, as usual. I was exhausted from watching a family run around like that, but I realized that this was probably what went on in the Edo house every day that Harry was late to school. Mr. and Mrs. Edo were growing... Uh, grown human beings and seemed really smart. How could a small hamster help them change their ways? I thought about that problem all day between naps in my cage. Then an idea began to take shape in my head. The Edos weren't very good about keeping track of the time. But when they did, they seemed to check that clock on the mantle a lot. I couldn't change the Edos. But maybe I could change the clock they trusted so much. What do you think he's going to do, my friends? He's going to change the clock to maybe go faster or slower. What do you think he's going to do? If he makes the clock slower or faster, which way is it going to go? Let's see. As I stared at the clock a long time, a little rhyme rolled around in my brain. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. Susie had called me a mouse. At least I think that's what she meant by mouth. And hamsters are a lot like mice. According to Aldo, we're both rodents. So if the mouse could go up the clock, I, I guess a clever hamster like me could too, as long as I had a plan. I rested some more while while the Edos were gone, knowing I had a busy night ahead of me. Once the family was back from the game, Harry's team won. Yay! I learned that the Edos were really fun as long as they didn't have to worry about time. Harry showed Susie some of his soccer moves in the backyard. Then they went out for a while and came back with lots of yummy food. Later, Mr. and Mrs. Edo cooked a big dinner and Harry and Susie helped and they gave me carrots. After dinner, they all went downstairs to the basement and Harry brought me along. I was glad he did because I got to sit in my cage and watch the family play table tennis. They didn't play tennis with a table. They played on the table using a small bouncy ball and paddles. Ping pong. Have you guys played that? It's fun. Susie was too young to play, but they gave her a paddle and let her try. Harry and his parents were very good at hitting the ball back and forth across a table with a little net going down the center. It's just like a tennis but it's on the table, very small. They have a net in the middle and they just have to hit the ball back um, over the net. 
The game was quite exciting and my neck got tired from turning my head back and forth, back and forth, following the ball. Hey, maybe Humphrey could, uh, would like to play, Harry said. I shivered and I quivered a little bit, worried that the Edos are going to bat me back and forth with the battle. He thought he was going to be in his hamster ball going back and forth. But here he had a better idea. First, he put blankets all around the edges of the table so I would not roll off. Then he placed, a, uh, placed me inside my hamster ball and set it on the table. Go for it, Humphrey, he said. The Edos all leaned in and watched as I rolled my ball across the table towards the net. As I, I was able to pick up quite a bit of speed. As I hit the net, I bounced off just like a little white ball. Score one for Humphrey, said Harry. Let's give him a point every time he bounces off the net. I don't mean to brag, but I scored ten points before Harry's mom said she was tired and needed to get to bed. She was tired. What about me? But I still had lots of work to do. Once I was alone in the living room and the house was completely quiet, I opened the lock that doesn't lock and slid down the leg of the coffee table. The moon shone through the big double doors and I could see that there was a set of metal shelves next to the fireplace. The shelves were spaced close together, which was a, a lucky break for me because I could easily climb up and hop into the mantle or onto the mantle. I haven't had any experience with clocks, but I hoped that I could figure out how this one worked. It was an old-fashioned clock with numbers and hands, not the kind with light and numbers. The time was exactly 11.25. There was no way to set the time on the front of the clock, so I moved around to the back. There was a knob there, which I figured was for setting the time. I reached up and tried to turn the knob to the right. The thing didn't budge. My plan was not going to work. I sat back down on a mantle and rested. Wait a minute, Humphrey. I squeaked softly to myself. You turn off Rockin' Aki. Surely you can turn this little knob. I felt very determined as I leaped up and grabbed onto the top of the knob with all my might. I don't weigh much, but I hoped that I could hang on long enough. I would be heavy enough to move the knob. I shimmied my body over to the right and I tried to yank the knob down. Oof! The knob budged a little bit. Ding, 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 ding. Suddenly the chimes rang out. I dropped back to the mantle. Ding, 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 ding. The chimes were so loud it felt as they were ringing in my brain. It was enough to give me a huge hamster headache. Still, I had a plan and nothing was going to stop me. The ringing stopped, so I leaped up again, hung for dear life, and the knob moved a little more. I let go and scurried around the front, checked the time, and returned the back to the back of, uh, to move the knob again and again. My paws were aching. When I went around the check to check the clock again, I saw I had set the clock ahead five minutes. I was afraid to set it too far. Then the Edos might catch on, but maybe five minutes would give him a difference. So he's like, he set the clock ahead because of their faster thinking, if it's 11 o'clock, say that you have to be there at 11 o'clock, but they don't leave the house until 11 o'clock. So now the clock is faster, they might get there on time. Like here he getting to school and then leaving for soccer on time. Humphrey's a pretty smart hamster, I think. Feeling unsqueakably pleased with myself, I looked for a way back to my cage. The thought of climbing down that wire shelf made my stomach a little queasy. But on the other side, there was a window with curtains and a long cord hanging down. Perfect! I grabbed onto the cord and I began to slide. Eek! I hadn't realized that this cord would be so slippery and I slid way, way, way faster when I slid down the cord and to the blinds in room 26. The room was a blur and I zoomed down to the floor, which I hit with a little harder than I would have liked. Ouch. Thump. Once I recovered, I looked up at the clock. It was 11.45 by then. Of course, I knew that it was really only 11.40. I'm so glad I know how to tell time. I had another lucky break when I got back to the coffee table. There was a footstool next to it, and I climbed up easily and hopped back on the table and into my cage. I was never so happy to crawl into my sleeping hut as I was at night, and to think, at that moment, 
Og was alone in room 26, just swimming around in its tank. The next morning, I was a little sore but anxious to see if all my hard work would pay off. It was a little later in the morning when, again, there was a lot of running back and forth through the living room around 9.45. We're going to be late to church, Mrs. Ito said, walking into the room in a row. I'm all set, Mr. Ito answered. He strolled in, completely dressed for the day. You make sure the kids are ready, his wife said. I'll get dressed. Mr. Mr. Ito disappeared, and I could hear footsteps down upstairs as the whole family hurried around. They finally reappeared in the living room again, dressed for church. Oh no, we're going to be late again, Mrs. Guido said, looking at the clock. Only five minutes late, her husband said. Let's go. Hey, that worked. If they're only going to be five minutes late, and here he set the clock five minutes, they're going to be on time. When they left, I looked up at the clock. It said it was five minutes to ten. But I knew it was only ten minutes to ten. The Edos probably make it to church on time. Barely. The quiet of the day was quiet. Uh, the rest of the day was quiet, quiet, quiet. I was dozing when Harry came back and picked up my cage. Come on, Humphrey, he said. You can help me with my homework. Eek! I squeaked. I wasn't upset about the homework. I was upset because I didn't want to end up in Harry's room for the night. I already had a plan to give the Edos extra more help. Thank goodness when Harry finished, he carried my cage packed downstairs to the table in the living room. My plan was safe. When the house was quiet that night, after the clock chimed 11 o'clock, I opened the door to my cage, took a deep breath, and once again headed up to the wire shelf to the mantel. With a great effort, I turned the clock forward five more minutes. So now they're five minutes early, or five minutes fast. Ten minutes fast, I'm sorry. That would give the Edos an extra 10 minutes in the morning. Hopefully the next morning I wouldn't be tardy and neither would be Harry. Humphrey's rule of school. Homework could be extremely tiring, especially if you're a classroom pet. He is one busy, busy, busy hamster, isn't he, my friends? He um, set the clocks fast, 10 minutes fast in the Edos house. Do you think he's going to help the Edos be on time? Hmm? We'll have to find out next week and find out. Uh, read next week and find out. Okay, my friends? I miss seeing you guys, and I hope to see you guys soon. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.